Hello, it's Randy Rhodes. Here's a clip from our show, and go to randyrhodes.com for the whole thing and a podcast. Buy a stinking podcast. Mary had a little man, man, man. The fault. We believe that all men are created equal. To the magnificent mosaic that is America. From Radio Beacon to Radio Beacon. I have a dream. Change has come to America. Believe it. Knock, knock. Who's there? It's a figment of your imagination. Randy Rhodes Show. Turn up your mind. Save Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security without cuts. Have to do it. And I'm not going to cut Medicare or Medicaid. Mm -hmm. Every other Republican's going to cut. And even if they wouldn't, they don't know what to do because they don't know where the money is. I do. I'll <laughs> save Medicare. Ben Carson wants to get rid of Medicare. You can't get rid of Medicare. You know, Medicare is a program that works. There's fraud. There's abuse. There's waste. But you don't get rid of Medicare. You can't do that. People love Medicare, and it's unfair to them. I'm going to fix it, make it better, but I'm not going to cut it. I Every Republican wants to do a big number on Social Security. They want to do it on Medicare. They want to do it on Medicaid. And we can't do that. And it's not fair to the people. Everybody's got to be covered. This is an unrepublican thing for me to say, because a lot of times they say, no, no, the lower 25 percent, they can't afford private. We're but going to have a health care that is far less expensive and far better. Yes. They want to take your Medicare, take your Social Security, cut the hell out of it. I'm not going to do that. Yes, I'm premiums will be coming down. Yes, <laughs> deductibles will be coming down. Also working very much, and this has a lot to do with business on health care, where we can get great health care for our country at a much reduced price. And Obamacare, as you know, is a total and complete disaster. You know, I've been talking about a plan with heart. I said, add some money to it. A plan with heart. And I'm not going to cut medic. So we're going to end up with <laughs> tremendous health care at a lower price. And I think people are going to be extremely happy. Liar! 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 You're a genius. You're a genius. Yeah. Uh, there you have it. Uh, you know, uh, the president uh, promising you that he's not going to cut Medicaid or Medicare or Social Security. <laughs> but he is. Now, of course, um, there's the big contretemps going on now, not just about the health care. Uh, obviously, we'll get there. Uh, but there is a big contretemps going on about CNN or it's the CNN. Uh, they're fake. It's fake. Everybody. The CNN is completely and utterly uh, garbagey fake. It's just a, a steaming pile of turd. It's just never trustworthy. It doesn't ever report the truth. It's always making crap up and it will always make crap up. And Breitbart is the way to go. <laughs> Why? Why is this a, an issue today? Well, it's an issue today simply because CNN posted a story on Thursday. Yes, on Thursday there was a story that they posted. And then on Friday, the story was taken down. The story was... Um, removed from the site with apologies from CNN that it didn't pass their muster, that it didn't pass their journalistic standards, it didn't make their editorial review uh, standards, and so they're taking the story down with apologies. And then three of the reporters who contributed to that story, which was about Mr. Um, you never even heard of him, right? Anthony Scaramucci, 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 will you do the Fandango? Apparently, CNN reported he will do the Fandango, and Scaramucci says he won't do the Fandango, and there was contratumps. And so CNN uh, posted the story that said Anthony Scaramucci would do the Fandango on Thursday. And on Friday, they said, no, he may or may not do the Fandango. We're taking the story down until we can confirm that his hips don't lie, is what it is. The three reporters who contributed to that particular story resigned, which is what happens when you're a real journalist and you get something wrong. You uh, apologize. I don't know that you have to resign, but they did because they didn't want to taint or tarnish CNN's extremely reliable record on reportage of real news. So three of them resigned. What happened after that was Anthony Scaramucci, who still insists he will not do the Fandango, t uh, tweeted, CNN's got a lot of class. That was the right thing to do. Thank you for removing the story. 
I forgive you, all is forgiven. Okay? But that didn't stop the Trump administration from consistently and repeatedly attacking CNN as being fake news. Sarah gave an on-camera press briefing today where the press was actually invited and it was run in real time with video and everything. Yeah, I was shocked that the press briefings included the press today and some very difficult questions for her. Things that she did not know how to answer. And so suffice it to say, the press briefing was cut short, real short. Here's a just brief exchange between a reporter who says, why is it that if we retract a story, if we apologize that for a story, if we fact check a story and it doesn't pass muster, not only do we retract it, not only do we apologize to our viewers, not only do we give our viewers the option of uh, you know turning us off or not reading us because we are consistently wrong, uh, but you, you, Sarah, we're stuck with you. We're stuck with you and Lion Spicer for four freaking years. No one has a choice. You speak for the White House and only you and only his press corps. And that's it. And we don't have a choice. So why do you continue to lie? It was unbelievable. If we make the slightest mistake, the slightest word is off, it is uh, just an absolute tirade from a lot of people in this. Can I just pause it there for a brief moment? Thank you. Uh, I would just like to pause it there because we opened the show with him getting not words wrong, not out of place, not a sad bed, not misspelled cafefe, not misspelled tap. T-A-P-P. No, it's not because he gets words wrong. It's because he freaking lies. Okay? He lied. That was what that montage, which was created by my little Scotty Mednick, that was the montage that he made to show you how often uh, and how, you know, uh, hard the president lied to con Americans who need and rely on Medicare and Medicaid, let alone Social Security disability checks, that he would not cut those programs. All those clips, all those clips that were put into a fabulous montage for you so that you could hear how often, how frequently, how, 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 how definitively this president lied on his way up the ladder about never cutting Medicare. All right, now she, her, her point is, if we get the slightest thing wrong. If we make the slightest mistake, the slightest word is off, it is uh, just an absolute tirade from a lot of people in this room. But news outlets get to go on day after day and cite unnamed sources, use uh, stories without sources, have, uh, you know, you mentioned the Scaramucci story where they had to have reporters resign. Come on, you're inflaming everybody right here, right now with those words. This administration has done that as well. Why in the name of heavens, any one of us, right, are replaceable, and any one of us, if we don't get it right, the audience has the opportunity to turn the channel or not read us. I think I you think, have been elected to serve for four years at least. There's no option other than that. We're I here think to that, ask you questions. Right. We're here to provide the answers. And what you just did is inflammatory to people all over the country who look at it and say, see, once again, the president is right and everybody else out here is fake media. And everybody in this room is only trying to do their job. Well, and, and I, I just I, I disagree completely. First of all, I think if anything has been inflamed, uh, it's the dishonesty that often takes place by the news media. And I think it is outrageous for you to uh, accuse me of inflaming a story when I was simply trying to respond to his question. <laughs> yeah. All right. So um, let's see if Trump lies. Let's just see. Donald, I need to come back to the topic we've been all screaming about here, which is Scalia. Was he murdered? What do you think of that? It's a horrible topic, but they say they found a pillow on his face, which is a pretty unusual place to find a pillow. After talking to his physician and from what I was told, I came to the conclusion that, in fact, this was, in all probability, a natural death. You are not allowed to be a president if you're not born in this country. He may not have been born in this country. His grandmother in Kenya said he was born in Kenya and she was there and witnessed the birth. In fact, I'll go a step further. The people that went to school with him, they don't even know, they never saw him. They don't know who he is. Yes, in fact, I was born in Hawaii, 
August 4th, 1961, in Kapilani Hospital. A heavy Arab population that were cheering as the buildings came down. We asked many people on the streets today if they had seen any acts of celebration, and we couldn't find one person that had. They did know it was coming, and George Tennant, the head of the CIA, told them that it was coming. So they did have advance notice, and they didn't really work on it. I don't like this idea of saying that George W. Bush lied. He's wrong, and he's, he's uh, I think, deliberately uh, promoting those views in order to advance his political interests. That's something that really only comes from the, the kook part of America. Just the other day, two years old, two and a half years old, a child, a beautiful child, went to have the vaccine and came back and a week later got a tremendous fever, got very, very sick, now is autistic. There's simply no scientific evidence <laughs> that links vaccines to autism. I think he lies. I think if I had a choice of whether or not to believe the Washington Post, the New York Times, um, whether or not to believe, uh, you know, the Atlantic, the Guardian, uh, the Center for um, uh, Progressive Politics or, you know, the, the tax, the OMB or the CBO, the nonpartisan CBO, you know, I think I would rather believe statistics, numbers, the La Bureau of Labor statistics, you know, than Trump about anything about anything on any day you know last night he started tweeting about we're watching syria and syria is about ready to do another chemical attack do you know that um it was reported that no one in our defense department no one in the state department everybody was caught off guard by this man's uh, insane tweets everybody was caught off guard nobody knew what the hell he's talking about this man could get us all killed so if you give me a choice between CNN, who posted a story on Thursday, and then by Friday the story was taken down, apologized for because it didn't meet their editorial standards, uh, and then three reporters resigned, great reporters, Eric, Eric Lichtenbrow was one of the reporters, Thomas Frank was one of the reporters that resigned, and one of the editors, Lex, uh, resigned. I mean, you have these three people with integrity. Who, who, I mean... Do you think Fox will ever retract Pizzagate? You think Fox will ever retract Tiller the baby killer? You think Fox will ever retract the Terry Schiavo debacle? No, I don't think that they're going to retract anything. I think Bill O'Reilly sat on the TV screaming about these women were all full of crap while he was settling for millions of dollars. I think Donald Trump had a university that uh, was guilty of committing fraud to the tune of $25 million in a freaking settlement, no less. And he still made money on those people. <clears throat> no, I'm not going to believe anything that comes out of this man. You know, a couple days ago, we tweeted the complete list of lies that was posted in the New York Times. Now, I know a lot of people only read the newspaper online. It doesn't have quite the impact as when you get the newspaper in your home. We have it in the house. I forgot to bring it in. It's, it's like five sheets. I mean, it's just it's gigantic. The complete list of lies is like two whole pages of the New York Times with and, and it was a, at least, at least, he was like not, he was underperforming if he only had one lie per day. He was underperforming because he was usually good and he is usually good for at least two or three lies per day. That's why he can't get any legislation through Congress. Nobody trusts this man. Not even his own freaking GOP, okay? Nobody trusts him. He's a world heavyweight champion liar. And yes, I will take uh, journalism that's fact-checked that has editorial standards over him every day. Every day. Go to randyroads.com for the whole thing and a podcast. Buy a stinking podcast.